What's up guys, Barry here. In today's video, I'm gonna share with you a couple of alternative ways to export, bounce, and re-record your tracks inside a machine. Doing so will not only reduce your CPU usage, but also give you the opportunity to sample and resample yourself to give you a more creative and unique approach to making your music. With that said, let's jump into the machine and check it out. When I think of the standard process of bouncing out tracks in machine, I think of going to file, followed by export audio. But in that scenario, you've now removed that piece of music outside a machine. In these alternative methods, you keep the music inside a machine, which allows you to further process and manipulate those sounds for a more unique approach in creating your music. To illustrate these different methods, I built this eight bar loop inside a machine. So the first method is to export that loop the exact way we heard it. So we remain in pad mode, and on the middle right, we press and hold that wave icon. Once it's done exporting, you don't want to release it just yet. Instead, you can drop it onto an empty pad in that same group, or drag it into an entirely new group, and then go ahead and drop that track. Okay, so let's say that machine is overloading because you have one VST that is eating up all of that CPU. If you want to export a single track, you go to that one sound, followed by keyboard mode, and then you just follow the same steps as previous. If the purpose is to free up CPU usage, you just want to disengage that VST on that MIDI track because you no longer need it. Alright guys, so those were a few alternative ways to export and bounce your tracks inside a machine. Next, let's look at the re-record function, which comes really handy if you're working with the Machine Plus. Okay, so I'm gonna show you guys how to do this both on the software and on the hardware. So on the software, you go to the sample editor, just make sure you're on an empty pad. And on the bottom, you'll have three options for input, external stereo, external mono, and internal. We leave the input at C1 as that's where our instruments are. You also have three recording modes, detect, which starts recording based on volume, Sync, which is great if you're recording loops as you can dictate the length, and Loop, which operates like a guitar looping pedal and is great for live looping. So for this example, we're gonna use Sync mode. All you have to do is press Start, followed by Play on Machine, and then you just wait for the track to record. All right, cool. So since you told machine to record an eight bar loop, it did just that. And then it placed that audio into a sampler engine. All right, cool. So let's see how we can use this internal re-record function on the hardware. And in this scenario, we're gonna use detect mode. One thing to keep in mind with detect mode is that it records based on threshold. So let's keep an eye out for that. So you notice that the audio meter wasn't hitting the arrows. That means if you hit play, it wouldn't record your audio. So all you have to do is turn down your threshold for that meter to hit it. And once you've adjusted your threshold, all you have to do is hit start and play on the machine. Be sure to check out my video three ways to make loops your own to take this concept of sampling and resampling yourself to another level. If this video brought value to you, please consider hitting that thumbs up button. Down in the comments, if you have any questions or any topics you want me to cover in future videos, let me know. And of course, subscribe. Peace.